I'll do that, chums, as I, Captain Steve, I doff my cap. Right, so we're back in Dragon's Dogma and we've got the mission. Epicurean Delight. We need to get some soured sort of meat and we've got to keep it in an airtight flask, they say. Right, so this ambrosia meat that you get, you usually get it from wild boars, but getting it to sour and ripen just perfect isn't an easy trick, but I'm going to show you a little method where you can get them from a crate. Yes, from a crate. Anyhow, you need your airtight flasks. Buy five. Buy five from this lovely lady in Grand Soren. Thank you very much, shopkeep. Heck yes. And now we're going to head on out into the world map. And on the side of the world map, I'll show you where you need to go. You need to sort of just make a straight sort of line west from Grand Soren over to the mines. So there we go, the quarry. The quarry north entrance. That's where we're going. The ancient quarry north entrance directly west from the Grand Soren main entrance where they took in that snake head right at the start. You know, the hydra head, I should say. Right, so here's the actual mines. I'm going for a bit of a climb. Not that you can get much higher than where I am now for some reason even using double d jump hopefully there's not a secret chest up there that i'll never be able to get right awesome All right let's head on back down and let's go through the mine entrance and i'll show you where you go from the mine entrance i'm just going to grab this bag of gold lovely lovely everyone likes a freebie heck freebie yes right let's head into the actual mine now what i would say is because we're going to be sort of cheating time with this as well. We're going to be uh, resting for four nights to refresh the crate that we get the ambrosial meat from. As you're going through the mine, happy to loot whatever you want. Grab loads and loads of commodities. Maybe mine all the different mining points. There's loads of mining points to be gathered. There's lots of different uh, items you can grab just on this trail as well. So yeah, from this main entrance, let me just show you. You go straight up here. Go straight past this guy that's bothering his head. He's not always bothering his head. Just keep going. Just keep going straight. And he's kind of following the candle lights. And I, yeah, wherever you see light, it's like that middle corridor was slightly more illuminated than the others. Just go that way. And the crate itself is just here it's just here in this central sort of area that's the crate right there i'm not going to smash it yet but it's right by those candles it's a well-lit crate yes it's very hard to miss to be honest because there's not that much light inside of here but here's the actual map and here's where i am i'm just left well just to the east of that little sort of lever that's over there as well but here we go this is the actual route that i just took i just legged it from the actual entrance that's the entrance we came in go all the way down there just a straight beeline don't go off on left or right, just straight. And it's in this sort of centralised area. There were, there was a troll around here when you actually came here the first time. If you haven't unlocked this, there was a troll there. And there's a lever just to the left there. If you pull that lever, it just opens up the corridor. It doesn't really take you anywhere, to be fair. Anyway, there we go. I haven't actually pulled that lever, so I might as well freaking do it. Might as well. But there we go. It's right by this lever. Just over by where the candles are, that's where the crate is. I'm just trying to get home exactly where the cake crate is, because it is a bit of a maze, I suppose. But it's a straight one. Right, <laughs> so here we go. There's the meat. Soured ambrosia meat. Now, as soon as you pick it up, you want to go into your inventory space, and you want to put it in that airtight flask. Okay, so pick it up and go to combine on the menu and then just hit X, and it's going to combine it into the airtight flask. Hooray and hurrah for me. There we go. Done. So there we are. Got one kept meat. Now what you need to do is go out through the opposite entrance. Not the one that you came in, but the exit, if you like, over to the western side of this sort of cave complex. So just carry on going until you get all the way out. And like I say, you... Happy to loot whatever. You know, I've got Phoenix there doing some mining. So I gave them all pickaxes. All my characters have got pickaxes so they can grab crafting materials while we're in here. Now you can walk it quite slow and make sure you craft and get all of those mining points. There's even, even one on the wall just as you come out of here, just on your left. And that gives some pretty stones every now and again. Very nice, very pretty. Pretty, pretty stones. Yeah, they look just like other stones in the menu though. Shh, tell no one. Right, anyhow, now you want to make your way over to the little encampment on the map. You can see it there by that little tent. So I just want to head towards that. Don't go the other way. There's a freaking big dragon around the opposite side of the lake and he, he tears you a new one if you're not all that into it. Anyhow, just battle your way past some Saurans or whatever encounters you. Sometimes there's some goblins. Yeah, there are some wild boars around here that you can kill and get ambrosia meat, but the souring time, I've never managed to get it done perfect. Right, so now you need to just go and talk to the middle guy. Not this guy. This guy will sell you wares, but yeah, there you are. And yeah, so if you talk to the other guy, this chap with a backpack on, you can stay the night for 100 gold. You want to do that. Also, you can store all your items. So all that crafting stuff you've got with your pickaxes, give it to that chap. It sends it back to your inn. Heck <laughs> yes, awesome. You can just keep doing this. Anyhow, 
after you've done one night stay, you then have to stay another three nights. So four nights in total. Make sure you stay till morning four times. Count them and make sure you do it four times because that resets the crate. Going back there on the third one, no meat. No crate even, it's just obliterated still. So make sure you stop four nights. Okay, brilliant, awesome. There's also a lot of fishing points around this lake, but like I say, there's a dragon around that lake as well. And they all renew as well every four nights as well, if you do want to get a load, load of large fish. But just keep in mind, you've only got five of those um, canisters that we bought to keep things in. Anyhow, there we go, done. So here we go, I'm just refreshing four times. Yeah, it's, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a thing. And then you've got a, oh God, I went and spoke to my blinking pawn, didn't I? No, I didn't, awesome, great, nice, yeah. And now, after you've stayed all four nights, you want to leg it back to the cave where you uh, got the meat from and back to that crate. So, there we go. There we are. On our way back. Lovely job. So, to get back there, I mean, you can put the little X on the map to help you because it, it hasn't really got one. So, yeah, there it is, just there. Anyway, it's just slightly north of this camp. But there you go. I'm going to put a little X there. So, at least I've got a marker to head towards on my little mini map in the bottom right, uh, bottom left corner. Yeah, so we're going to head back there. Here we go. Kill all the Saurans yet again. Lovely. They drop they drop loads of stuff anyway. So, pick up all the Sauron scales and things. Always good for upgrading. Sometimes they drop these little green balls, which are really good for upgrading and stuff as well. Yeah, some sort of eye thing. But here we go, heading back to that crate. And like I say, look, there's none others that have got freaking candles by them. This one, though, lit up like a Christmas tree. Smash, grab, and uh, stick it in a flask. Stick it in a flask. Oh, yes, we're sticking stuff in a flask. Yeah, a lump of pork in a flask. Uh, normally, at butchers, they wrap it, like, in brown paper and put, like, some... Uh, well, like they do at mine, anyway. And put a nice little bit of string on it. And, yeah. Anyhow, there we go. Done. So we've got our meat. There's other stuff there as well that you can pick up if you really want to. Just don't go and stick it in one of your five flasks. Right. And head on back out. And it's the same. Rinse and repeat. So here we go. I'm heading back to the encampment. And I'm just going to stay the night. Yes. How many times? Four times. Stay there four times. Make sure you stay till morning four times. Don't go and hit stay till night and then stay till morning because that's just not going to work. Stay till morning four times. It's the top menu, so you can just keep pressing X or whatever your accept key is. Awesome. Brilliant. And then back to your crate. Yes. There we go. So let's head on back down to the crate. So it, it is very easy to do. Very easy to find. Pick up your meat. Stuff it in a flask. Yeah. So you've got to do that. Like I said, five times, but you stay at the encampment four times and you need five flasks. So there's a lot of numbers that are coming to you in this episode, people. I hope you're okay with numbers. Yes, awesome. Brilliant. Oh, great. I've got a, my golden egg that that girl gave me has gone freaking rotten. Darn, I should have stuffed that in a poxy flask, shouldn't I? But then again, if I'd done that quest right, she would have given me the golden idol. I stuffed that one right up royally. Right, okay. Awesome. There we go. We can crush that one. And that's all five. We've got all five of our meats. So power of editing there, people. And we've popped the actual mission. So now I'm just going to use my eternal fairy stone to get me back to Grand Soren. So here we go. Enter the second menu here. Select my eternal fairy stone. Head back to the Grand of the Sorens. And uh, yeah, I've just got to go see the airsmith. The alesmith. Yes, the bartender. The barkeep. The innkeep. What? No, he's not the innkeep. He's a barkeep. He's the little guy with the tartan skirt. He's the only person in the whole game that has a tartan skirt. I don't know where he heralds from inside of the world of Grancis, but he seems to be alone in his fashion statement. Yeah. Anyhow, let's go and see him. He's the little chap with the freaking scar on his face, if you don't, haven't noticed that he's walking around in a tartan. But anyhow, let's head on in over to this little place over here. It's to the right. Yes, it's where there's a missions board as well that gives you all of the obscure, weird fetch quest missions. Hello there. You love your tartan skirt. Heck yes, I do. Yes, it goes well with your green ensemble. Lovely. Awesome. We have completed the mission, people. That's it. We've got the mission. Done. Now, you don't get a lot of gold, and we did spend a lot of gold stopping all those freaking knights, and it's a bit of a tedious quest, to be honest. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm like one of these people that likes to complete all missions. Until next time, people. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again, and thank you very much for watching, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it in Dragon's Dogma. Heck yes, I am. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. 
And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.